Since 2010, the Guyana Forestry Commission has been identified as the lead agency to work on what is called National Monitoring, Reporting and Verification Systems. We look at um, how much forest we have at the beginning of that year, how much forest we have at the end of that year, and what has caused that forest to change over the course of those 12 months. Every annual period we see the utilization of satellite images and these images allow for us to have wall-to-wall -wall coverage over the whole of Guyana and to quantify the areas of change using the imagery. Whether the area is um, under government management and ownership or Amerindian management and ownership or protected area status, we monitor and report on all areas. We work with 20 uh, plus communities to use their local knowledge to manage and monitor their forest and their natural resources. By understanding um, weather patterns, uh, fishing habits, um, wildlife, um, you know, migration and those things. And we're combining that with, with scientific methodologies of how to analyze these things. We feel that the, 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 the custodians of the forest, the users of the forest are, are the ones that we should be tasking with a lot, with managing and monitoring, and we should be depending on them to monitor and manage and protect our forest. So in the same way the National MRV tells the status of forests at the beginning and the ending of every period for the whole country, the CMRV is able to tell us the status of forests for individual communities. I don't know if there is any other project in, in the world happening like this, but as far as I know. Countries outside of Guyana are looking to Guyana for uh, guidance in terms of how you do this thing. What are some of the lessons learned? What are some of the failures? How, how should we do it? How should we not do it? It serves to help us be able to really in a very um, I would say sound manner, say that the impacts of forests have been test checked on the ground by community stakeholders. And secondly, it helps to build the capacity of our community stakeholders to be able to do some of these things themselves. You have to know what you have in your community. Know how much you will want to use and how much you can put up, how much you can save. This is good for conservation, is that you get much information from individual communities and then you compile all of that information and then you can run models on it, you can run um, different methodologies at it which will help understand how, how things are either depleting or why they are not there anymore. What we didn't knew before, what our great-great-grandparents didn't thought of, we are in it and I'm hoping that what we enjoy in today's generation, the future generation will enjoy natural things.